I want to go to the Atlanta Hawks now. The Atlanta Hawks have been definitely a team that's taken advantage of a schedule. They've beaten the Magic. They've beaten the Pistons twice. They've beaten the Rockets. But they also knocked off Milwaukee last night without Trey Young. And that was like basically, you know, for what Milwaukee has been so far this season, full strength Milwaukee. The DeJounte Murray edition, I had some questions after their first game against the Rockets. I am very, and I had a lot of questions when they acquired him as well. Mm -hmm. I, I was, I think, one of the more skeptical people about this that I know at least. I'm coming around. Like I, I do think this is going to work with the, the DeJounte Murray, Trey Young pairing, the playmaking, um, the fact that they have a high level, all-star level player out there at all times is really valuable for them. Um, yeah. And you would expect on some level, maybe that like the Trey Young, DeJounte Murray, maybe that two man combo would be a little bit worse than some of the other two man combos that are possible within their starting lineup. The Trey DeJounte two-man combo has actually been the best two-man combo of any of the possible two-man combos in their starting lineup so far. So Trey and DeJounte is working. I This Atlanta team, I think, has been pretty good so far. Yeah, I thought last night was – I'm going to start with with talking about just some of the younger guys because I think last night to me was uh, the night for – like I was, I was teetering – on this Hawks team the last couple the last last week, I think I would say, because they had the loss of the Bucks last week. I was like, all right, I don't, I don't, I don't know how I feel about this. They had the loss of the Raptors, which I think there's a lot more to dive into with that. But overall, like watching this team, I've I've been like honestly pretty encouraged. You know, I think that they're they're going to finish above 500 in my opinion. Like I think that's the level of team that they're playing like right now. Um, and like you mentioned, I really like the way that they've been utilizing Trey and DeJounte. I think they've done a good job of having DeJounte bring up the ball more force teams to guard him, but then also involving training actions immediately to um, make him an off ball threat without necessarily running him off a million screens. Like, I, I don't think that he's been, you know, the Doug McDermott level off ball mover that I think people have always hoped that Trey Young would be, but I do think that he's done a decent enough job at, at being active in, in what they're asking him to do. And that's been enough. Um, their offense is only 11th right now. And I think a lot of that is due to just Trey having a, shitty shooting start and he's already started to get out of the slump a little bit um i think that's going to come around the passing has been i mean that skip pass he had the other night was that was left pass insane, like what are we man. talking about that was just crazy <laughs> stuff um yeah he's he's been impressive to start the year um without even being fully on his game offensively um and like you mentioned with dejounte like he's been perfect in working with clint capella and onyeka kongwu like yes. i think to me one of the reservations I had about DeJounte, and this is not meant as a slight towards him, I've always found his assist numbers a little bit overinflated just because it's mostly pocket pass and, and basic pick and roll stuff. Um, like he really ate living alongside Yaka Pertl, but being alongside Clint Capella and Onyeku Kongu, that's a pretty good way to keep that going. And he's yeah. just so good at what he does with his craft out of pick and roll scoring in the mid-range, being just a, you know overly effective enough at it to, to make it effective offense. Um I do think one of the saying issues, like, I'll, I'll ask you this. How have you felt about DeAndre Hunter this year? I've actually liked him. Like, I, yeah. I think that the problem is more that, like, it's more of a Nate McMillan thing yeah. from time to time where they'll, any action it feels like that isn't DeJounte or Trey centric is like a mid post, you know, face up for De, or, uh, DeAndre Hunter. And I'm just like, don't know that I need this necessarily. Yeah. It might be okay occasionally, but like they do it a little bit more often than maybe I would like, but look, he's shooting. Well, I think he's defended fairly well. I don't know yeah. that I would go like, you know, a super impactful all defense guy. Like I think yeah. they're hoping him to be, I think he's been like an above average defender so far with that. that can knock down shots from three and can occasionally make a mid post face up jumper. Is that enough for $95 million? No, but like, is it enough to be like a very clear starting wing for a DeJounte Murray, Trey Young team? Yes, I, I think that's true. Yeah, so I think that's that's what I wanted to get into. I think he's been good. Like, I agree with you. I think I've liked what he's done defensively. 
Um, he gets a rough whistle defensively. He gets called for everything on defense just by virtue of being in the way, um, which is yeah. just kind of funny. But I think to me, in watching the game against Toronto, a lot of people were like, oh, see, like I just don't trust Trey. And I think to me, this was a lot more where I was like, all right, this is where you see more of the flaws in the rest of the roster. Because I think so often it's like, all right, we're sending – we're sending two to the ball against Trey, ball out of his hands immediately. And DeJon, not DeJounte, uh, DeAndre just DeAndre. Got, yeah. absolutely des- destroyed by OG and Anobi in that game. Like that was a yes. demoralizing game for DeAndre Hunter. And I think that's where you see more of the issues right now with what the secondary creation can be. Um, especially if you know if DeJounte and, and Trey are on the floor together. Um, again, that's not gonna be all the time, but I do think like that's stuff that I'm it. I want to see what this team looks like with Bogdan Bogdanovich because he still hasn't yes. been healthy yet. Because I do think that that has me excited for what that could look like, um, especially like making DeAndre more of a four. And that brings up questions about John Collins. But that, that's an entire other thing. Like, not that he's been bad at start theory. He's just been in a kind of awkward place for me. But what I did want to hit on before we hit on that, last night against the Bucks, watching the way that they found a way to, to keep A.J. Griffin, Jalen Johnson – and on Yaku Kongwe together, like that bench unit was huge in the game against the Bucks last night. And um, I don't think that bench unit has been very good so far, just to be yeah. honest. Like, no, I, yeah, I, think I agree. That with they've that. struggled. Yeah. yeah. No, I think that what I'm hoping to see this year is for that to grow a little bit more. I've been relatively like pretty encouraged by what Jalen Johnson has done. I wasn't <laughs> expecting him to step in with as big of a Minnesota as he's had this year. Um, and he's been fine. Like, I think you saw it, it's not again, not that not saying that they are perfect players, but more so they just have a lot more versatility, length, and athleticism on this roster than they did last year. And I think last night was the encapsulation of that for me. I saw them get absolutely run over by the Bucks every time they played last year. I think this just yesterday, even with by vir- like, yes, they fouled a ton still, but by virtue of having as much length as they did on the court, as much size as they did on the court, they were really able to give Giannis more problems than I think he'd faced any game yet this year again part of that schedule and stuff too they didn't have chris middleton but um i like something well, some of the things you know what though like Onyeka defends Giannis very well yeah like that that has just been and he thing. dunked over Giannis twice yesterday which that was enjoyable yeah like for whatever reason Onyeka, and it makes sense like Onyeka has like the perfect frame to be able to do this because he's six nine and 245 pounds low center of gravity moves his feet mm-hmm. well like super super strong it makes sense that he'd be very good at defending Giannis, but i feel like he does there there might not be five better guys who do a better job in the nba on Giannis than Onyeka kongwu which is to say like Giannis is still gonna go for 30 10 and five because that's what yeah. he does but like makes it harder for Giannis I think like consistently makes Giannis's life way more difficult on Yeka and, and that's what I wanted to get into now I, I think Onyeka has been outstanding I think he is like pretty significantly outplayed Clint Capella so far this year really I do wow I think um, so I think Onyeka has been good but dude I've loved I, th- I think Clint's been really damn good this year I've I think Clint defense. has been very good defensively Mm -hmm. but you look at all of the lineup numbers so far the hawks are a plus two on offense and four points better defensively when onyeka is on the court they are substantially worse are on both ends not substantially worse on both ends but worse on both ends by a not insignificant degree when capella is on the court despite the fact that capella plays 90 percent of his minutes with trey 80 percent of his minutes with dejounte uh has played 62 percent of his minutes with the starters and Onyeka has been a part of these bench units that have just frankly not been very good. Mm-hmm. Like I think Onyeka has actually been like a big key cog for what has been successful for Atlanta. A lot of the time this year, you mentioned the DeJounte Murray pairing with Onyeka. I think that's been like so big to even get anything out of these bench units from Atlanta. Yep. Anytime that they run like the Capella bench unit, lineup they just get absolutely waxed it feels like um which kind of says to me that guys like DeJounte DeAndre Hunter particularly are doing a really good job of stopping guys from getting inside on Capella and being able to keep guys in front of Capella so that he doesn't have to like maneuver out of his drop scheme all that much and can kind of keep steady positioning, uh, which is great team defense. And I don't mean that as a slight, I, I just think that Onyeka has given them 
a bit of a different dimension, which has been very, very helpful for them. And mm -hmm. I think has ultimately been a little bit more effective for them. Yeah, I think that's fair, especially too. like I, I like what you mentioned just in terms of giving them a different look because they get a little bit more like I mean, they're able to just play often when they're playing and they're playing them out there with a little bit more length, just more size in general. And they're playing like this team has gotten after it defensively in a way that I wasn't quite anticipating this year. And I've appreciated that a lot. Yeah. Um, I think it's. One of the just one of my only drawbacks has been uh, I still am not quite there with Onyeka offensively. Like I like him a lot as a screener and what he can do, but I still just don't think he's the best roller. Like he has good stuff as like the you know the floater has been there a little bit more for him this year. Um, not that he's a below the rim finisher, but he's not the same lob threat as Clint right now. Um, so it just makes it a little bit not like murky. But I still think there's not saying that they should get rid of Clint or something. But I I've, I've seen yeah. a lot of fans just be like it's time to move on from Clint. I'm like. I get what you're saying, but also you're losing a lot if you if you just ask him right now or find well, a way to change it. But yeah, Onyeka can't play against some of the bigs in the East. Yeah, just like kind of straight up. Like he, Joel he's not Embiid quite... has made him look like a child every time they've played. Yeah. That's right, and, and that is a matchup that they have a very real opportunity to end up having to deal with in the playoffs. So you have to keep Clint. It's just that, like, I wonder if. At some point, we start to see more on Yucca minutes than Clint minutes. Yeah. Um, this season.